Greetings book lovers everywhere. I'm each train and welcome to each train talks. So have you ever been waiting for an amazing event to happen and you're beyond excited because that day has finally arrived? Well, that's exactly the kind of day I'm having. And I know you'll feel just as excited as I am to learn that my guest today is none other than the award-winning middle grade author, Jerry Craft. Jerry Craft is the author and illustrator of the new kid graphic novel series, as well as the offenders saving the world while serving detention co-authored with his sons, and he also wrote the po and drew the popular comic strip, Mama's Boys. And if that wasn't enough reason to be excited for this interview, Jerry Craft is the recipient of the Coretta Scott King Award, the 2020 Newbery Award, and the Kyrgyz Award for his very popular and loved novel, New Kid. And amazingly enough, New Kid is the first book ever to be awarded all three of these prestigious awards. New Kid has been translated into many languages, it is the first book of the soon-to-be trilogy. The second book is Class Act, which I have here as well. So now, without further delay, thank you so much for joining me on Eat Train Talks today, Jerry. Well, hey, that's probably one of the best introductions I've ever gotten, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you joining me today, and so many others appreciate it as well. We all love New Kid and your contributions to literacy and your fight for change. Oh. So. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for joining. And let's get into the first question. Okay. So not everyone knows this about you, but you draw the illustrations and write the words for all, for all your novels. So I'm really curious to know, what comes first, the pictures or the words? You know what? It actually, um, it goes back and forth, you know? <laughs> so sometimes I'll see something silly and I'll think of a picture. And then I'll write the words afterwards. And then after, and then sometimes I'll do the words first. So one of the things for the, the young creative folks out there, right, is you have to do what's comfortable, you know? So in a lot of ways, sometimes the pictures come first because when I was your age, I hated to read. <laughs> I was not a reader. So I always considered myself just an artist because I didn't think I could be an author if I didn't like to read, right? Just didn't yeah. make sense to me. So I always drew and sometimes I got, I felt like I got forced into writing because I didn't see the stories that I really related to, you know, both as a kid and specifically as an African-American kid, I didn't see those characters that I really bonded with. So then as I got older, I was like, you know what, I think I may have to write my own, you know, and it kind of came from there. So with, I think with, um, with, new kid when I first did that I sketched out the whole thing like lightly you know mm -hmm. and the same with class act and then with school trip which is the the third book uh there was so much that I, I didn't want to forget so that was the first one where I actually wrote it out as a script because you know it might be the last book in the series right so they're mm -hmm. talking about a trilogy so I wanted to make sure that Everything that was supposed to happen to Jordan happened. Everything that happened, to, because readers will call you out on it. You know, they'll be like, well, you know, whatever happened to Jordan? Did he go to art school or whatever happened to Drew? Did he do this? And so I want to really make sure that I had everything in there. So I, that was the first one where I actually wrote out like a script. That's really interesting. And it's kind of like, I just find it fascinating how sometimes it goes from pictures to words and words to pictures, and it's a whole process, and you never know what happens next. And I also like the transitions from Jordan on the cover to Drew, and now we're going to see Liam's perspective, which has always really interested me, because he kind of, he grew up in a really big house, his family was pretty rich, but he also had a really complicated life, so I'm interested to learn more about Liam as a character, and now... Um, I don't want to talk too long, so let's just get into no, 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 the but, but that's that's cool. Like whatever questions it is absolutely fine. Because so here's the thing: even though Drew was on the cover, um, there's a lot about Liam. Like they yeah. go to Liam's house, you see that he's not close to his dad, you see how his mom is, you see his sister, you see his little brother. So Drew is on the cover, but it was almost 50-50, you know. But now here's the thing. Um, I, you know, the new kid, I'm thinking it's Jordan's book, right? I hadn't really planned out all three because mm -hmm. I was just happy to get a chance to do one of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And once it started being successful, 
then my publishers, Harper Collins and Harper Alley and Quiltry were like, okay, can you do two more? So it wasn't like, you know, I sat, at, sat down at the beginning and did the whole, like, this is what's going to happen in book one, this is what's in book two, this is what's in book three. You know, I was hoping at some point that I get to do the school trip. So there's just a lot of like going back and forth of like what I wanted to do. And then as, you know, people like you started reading it, uh, kids would come over like, Mr. Graff, thank you so much for Ramon. I'd like to see more of him. I'm like, you want to see more of Ramon? Or, oh my goodness, my favorite character is Maury. I'm like, really? Your favorite character is Maury? So it it was weird like who people... Uh, you know, kind of gravitated to, because I'm thinking the big three, right? Jordan, Drew, and Liam. But then there's a lot of Maury fans, there's Ramon fans, and obviously Alexandra with her yes. puppets, you know, like she's as popular in a lot of ways as, you know, as the main three. Um, so in book four, uh, it's going to be Jordan, Drew, and Liam on the cover. And it's actually going to be a little bit about all of them. You know, they're all the new kids because they go to Paris on a school trip, you know. So there's 11 of them. There's two teachers, so I won't tell you which two. But then, um, you know, Jordan, Drew, Liam, Alexandra, Ashley, Ramon, uh, and then Maury, and then a few others. Uh, obviously, Andy has to go to, yeah. to spoil things, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it should be a lot of fun. I think that... Uh, in a lot of ways, it may be the best one. New Kid and Class Act are both full of so many powerful messages. So what's one message you really hope your readers will take away from your books? You know, it's it's kindness. You know, it is, you know, because, um, you know, going through the whole middle school thing, like kids can be mean. Yeah. And for no reason, you know. And... Um, my thing was acceptance, you know? So for example, when you see these kids in real life, you know, like I want kids to feel such empathy for Alexandra being teased or Jordan being small for his age, you know, or thinking that Drew is tough because he's dark skinned and he's tall, that when you love these characters, when you meet these people in real life, you give them a chance, you know? So if you see Alexandra at the lunchroom table by herself, you know, you go over and, and sit with her, you know? Now, not everyone likes everybody, yeah. you know, but I want people to give them a chance. And, you know, so many kids, as I go around to do school visits, like, Mr. Kraft, I know exactly what you mean because I'm Korean and everyone thinks I'm Japanese. Or I'm Dominican and everyone thinks I'm Mexican. Or I'm, so it's just about like taking that extra second. How do you pronounce your name? Where are you from? Like what's important to you? And then I think that school and just life in general becomes a better place for everyone. So that, that was the main takeaway I hope that people got from it. Yeah, I certainly took that away from New Kid Class Act. And I know that I'll take it away from school trip as well. Yeah. Because... Like, the characters are all so diverse, while many, like, for, so we have Alexandra, who has puppet, puppets on her hand, we eventually learn why in New Kid, and they're all so different, but they all learn to accept each other for who they are, and I know that maybe before I read New Kid, I might not have had the courage to go sit with Alexandra or somebody just sitting alone at a table, but now, after reading your books, I've found that courage. And when I go to public school next year, and it's going to be sixth grade, I know that if I find a lonely kid out there who doesn't really have many friends, I'm going to sit next to them. And it's kind of thanks to New Kid and all the middle grade books I read. That's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten, you know, because it, it shows that there, you know, that through literacy that you can really change the world. You change kids, you change the world. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, with Alexandra, that was one of those things where because I was talking about race and class that it could have been seen as like um, a, a tough book, you know, like really deep. And then so I put her in for some like comedy 
But then when all the kids kind of started teasing her, like that was part of the story, then I wanted to develop her more and give her more of a, a, a character arc so that you would be more sympathetic as opposed to her just being the target of jokes. So that was where she came and ended up developing and ended up being one of my favorite characters to write for. Yeah. Alexandra is probably my favorite character. Um, she's great for like comedy purposes, but also she's just a genuinely kind person, even yeah. if she seems a little weird at first. Yeah. And I read that new kid is semi-autobiographical. So will you share a few experiences from Jordan's story that are based on your life and a few that are fictional? Oh, yeah. So that's the thing. Um, I always wanted to be an artist, and my mom and dad did not want me to be an artist. So that house where Jordan lives is the actual house where I grew up. You know, so I was born in that house. I lived there from zero to 24, maybe, you know, in a brownstone. Um I did want to go to art and design and music and art in uh, Manhattan. My parents did not want me to. So they sent me to a private school in Riverdale called Fieldston. So that bus ride is my life of going back and forth to, it felt like two different planets, you know, going from Washington Heights, which is mainly African-American and Latinx, to going to this wealthy private school in Riverdale. Uh, I was always one of the smallest and the youngest kids in my class. So that's why I really got a sense of that, you know, one of the few kids of color. And um, then when we had sons, they went to private school. And then I got to watch them as an adult and seeing some of the things that they went through, like, you know, some of the African-American teachers being called by the wrong names or some of the African-American kids being called by the wrong word, names. So I think that's why I was able to capture that so well as I lived it myself in high school as a student. And then I lived it again as a dad watching my sons do it. So between the two, you know, I took this, and I took from here and I took from here. I took, and by the end, I had so much stuff. It was like trying to sit on the suitcase to get it all in. But um, obviously it worked out. So I read that Universal Studios bought the rights to a new kid movie mm -hmm. and Prentice Penny is working on the adaptation produced by one of my personal heroes, LeBron James, also Maverick Carter and others yep. through their production house, the Spring Hill Company. Right. So is this project still in the works? And I'm sure everyone listening, including myself, would love to hear more. So can you share any information about the new kid movie? Is it in production? Has the cast been picked? Um, no, the cast has not been picked. It is still going forward the uh screenwriter just um sent in the first draft of the screenplay so the people at spring hill are going through it now and then i'll get it in like maybe two weeks to go through it and give my feedback and then i guess once that happens once universal approves it then i guess they start putting all the other stuff together the cast and you know, we have the director, like you mentioned, Prentice Penny. Uh, Ken Wilson Pelton is doing the uh, the screenplay, which I'm very excited for. And it's going to be live action. You know, I was going back and forth between whether I wanted it to be live action or animated. And it's almost like depending on what movie I'm watching at the time. You know, like when I saw like the Wimpy Kid movie, I remember that was live action. I was like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah, I definitely want a live action. And then I saw Into the Spider-Verse. I was like, oh man, I definitely yeah. want it animated. You know, and now there's uh, an animated Wimpy Kid movie mm -hmm. uh, that's on Netflix, you know? So I go back and forth, but I think it's important because um, you don't really see funny um african-american kids in movies you know it's all about the struggle you know the, the books that i made up the mean streets of south uptown in new kid in class act it's more those kind of stories where i just wanted something that could be funny and have a loving family and loving friends and kind of a coming of age story that didn't have anything bad in it you know like there's no catastrophic you know there's a lot of little things that happen day-to-day -day stuff but there's no 
catastrophic thing that happens in so many movies that I always saw with kids of color as the stars. Yeah. And speaking of, so I happened to read your short story, Embracing My Black Boy Joy, featured in the anthology Black Boy Joy. And I'm Mm -hmm. so inspired by your writing. A quote from your short story that I love is, Dad says we have to make our own movies to show the world that the same mouths that pout and were angry also kiss our moms goodnight. That's just really stuck with me. You're calling out stereotypes and leading the fight for change. And I'm sure everybody watching wants to know, how can we join in your fight against discrimination, bullying, and stereotyping? You know what? Um, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, giving yourself the opportunity to even have Black heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, like as a kid, all the heroes who I identified with were were white because you know, like Black Panther wasn't nearly as cool (laughs) as he is now. There was no Miles Morales. So I was a Spider-Man fan, you know, and, you know, uh, Fantastic Four and Avengers. And there really weren't that many cool Black characters. And I love the fact now that, you know, a kid your age can go see, you know, Into the Spider-Verse one day and Shang-Chi the next day and Captain Marvel the next day, and Ms. Marvel the next day, and Black Adam the next day, you know? And so anyone can be a hero. It's based on who their character is, not how they they look. And so as movies hopefully try to move away from it always being, you know, a slave movie or a civil rights struggle movie or, you know, not that those aren't important, but, you know, dog man is important. If Mm -hmm. a kid reads it a hundred times, you know, and goes to bed hugging it, you know, wimpy kid is important. Smile is important. So I would like people to just be able to give uh, all kids um, different kinds of African-American heroes and Latinx heroes and native heroes, you know, and LGBTQ heroes Mm -hmm. that are just seen as regular people. Because I think there's so many divides that it's hard um, for kids to sometimes look at the, um, some of the African-American figures either in the news or in books or movies and be, oh, I want to be like that person, you know, because there's such a disconnect where now I've gotten so many kids saying, oh, I want to be like Drew or I want to be like Jordan. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my dream. And then to also, like you mentioned, see it in Spanish and French and Albanian and Romanian and Lithuanian and like all these different languages, which is I'm stunned by because I was always almost drummed into me that Black stories are only for Black kids. You know what I mean? So when I do a Zoom interview with kids and it's translated in real time in Italian or they're saying, hey, you got to come over to New Zealand because, you know, we're big fans. Like that is absolutely amazing to me, you know, so that that, that's a dream come true more than a lot of the other stuff, you know, but it's all been great. Yeah, that's it sounds like the best feeling hearing kids all the way in New Zealand. Yeah. And then kids in the U.S. saying, like, we're so inspired by Jordan's, by Drew's, by Liam's, by all their stories, and that they want to be like the characters. That sounds like just such a dream come true. Oh, absolutely. It's the best, especially for a kid like me that was told that comic books were silly and that yeah. they were worthless and that they weren't real reading to end up... <clears throat> growing up to make that comic book that changes so many people's perspective of comics is like, I mean, that's a story in itself, you know? Yeah, it really is a story in itself. And my next question is that I'm positive that kids and adults alike wants to know if you can share any sneak peeks about your newest story, the third new kid graphic novel, School Trip. And I know that you already shared a little bit, but are there any other, not spoilers, but sneak peeks you can share about your book coming out in 2023 yeah so april 4th 2023 and it's already done you know it's it's hard to finish a book and have to wait a year 
for it to come out. So like when I did New Kid, I handed it in in I think February of 2018. And it didn't come out until February 2019. That was a whole wow. year. Um, but now with Class Act, I handed it in in June of 2020. And it came out in October of 2020. So they really went double time. Yeah. So now this time they're going back to, you know, having it come out uh, a year later, which is really tough to have to wait, you know. But one of the things that I've never you know, seeing, like, I look for things with African-American characters that I had never seen as a kid. And I just kind of want to level the playing field, you know? So for example, you know, I grew up watching kids go to other cities, other states, other countries, other planets, other dimensions, you know? And I never saw kids of color having those trips. And if they did, again, something happened that would cut it short, you know, like in, in the past, and I'll just be silly for a minute, but, you know, someone like Drew would have saved up all his life to go to Paris and he gets there. And then it's like, oh, Drew, you have to come home and cut your trip short because, you know, your goldfish has a cold, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the trip is ruined. And so even when I was talking to my publishers initially, I said it was really important for at least half the book to be in Paris. Mm -hmm. And because I wanted all the kids to feel like the new kid because they don't speak the language, they don't know the food, you know? So I thought that that would be like a nice transition. Like everyone is on equal footing. It's not, you know, Jordan and Drew here and then everyone else like this. So it really kind of evens out. Um, I think it's the funniest of them. So I really wanted to add more like laugh out loud uh, moments and really leave you feeling like everything is going to be okay. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But they, they get the, they do Paris up, you know, they'll, they'll see some of the big things, you know, they'll see like the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and they'll, learn about the foods and stuff. And you'll really get to see more of some of the characters who have been secondary kind of get promoted a little bit, but you know, you'll still see your, your favorites. So was there someone who inspired you to pursue your writing journey, a parent, teacher, author, or role model? Not as a kid, you know, I unfortunately didn't have a library, a librarian, like libraries, to me, um, it was different, you know? Like you had that set of encyclopedias at your house and they were just gray and there was no color and they would just, you know, it was painful to have to look through them. And so you had a book report. So you had to go to the library and it was quiet and you couldn't make a sound, you couldn't smile. and everything it was dark you know what I mean it's not like now where there's life and color and cool posters and stuff like that you know and so I actually got more inspiration by the things that I didn't see you know a lot of things that made me who I am were kind of negative you know like I didn't see the characters I like I remember meeting one of my favorite comic book artists and I was like, oh my goodness, you you know, you're my favorite. Can I have an autograph? No. <laughs> and that, you know, that stuck with me the rest of my life, you know. So that's why I do my best to give autographs and be very attentive because, you know, again, that has stuck with me since I was 10 of meeting one of my heroes and having them not be so nice, you know. So I never want to be that guy, you know, where you came up to me at, you know, one of these book fairs, like, oh, I'm such a big fan. I'm like, yeah, okay, kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so there's a lot of things that I saw, but then there's a lot of things that I didn't see that inspired me to fill those. Now, once I was an adult and self-publishing my own books, and I see you've got the 
offenders behind it. So that was one that I actually self-published because I couldn't get published. Um, and then I started seeing like people like Kwame Alexander and Jason Reynolds and I met Walter Dean Myers and Jackie Woodson and people like that, Eric Velasquez. And then I would see those people. I'm like, oh, that is what I want to do. And then I remember uh, meeting Raina Telgemeier and seeing how kids just lost their minds when, you know, they, you know, would come to one of her book signings and they'd have like all 11 of her books or whatever. Like, can you sign this and sign my cast and sign my head and sign my socks and yeah. sign? And I was like, wow, like books can have that effect on people. Like that was a new thing for me. Um, and then, you know, Jeff Kenny, I saw... Uh, when me and my sons went to sign the offenders at the Connecticut Children's Book Fair, he happened to be at the table next to us. And like his line just blocked out the sun. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was so long. And me and my sons were just kind of sitting there like, yeah, maybe we should go get something to eat because there is no one that's going to come get our book, you know? So yeah, so th those are the kind of things that have kind of kept me going and will continue to keep me going. Yeah. And if I was a kid who had just read The Offenders and I was at your book fair, I would certainly want to get it signed. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought that was that was a book that I published myself. Again, I didn't ever think I could write a 200 page book because I never thought I would read a 200 page book when I was a kid. So I was like, well, what would I need as a kid to be able to read a book that big. So as you saw, some chapters are like two paragraphs. Yeah. You know, there'll be chapter six and six and a half and six and three quarters and six and seven eighths, you know, and I, my ideal book is to give a lesson, but not beat you over the head, but also make it funny. And yeah. so that was one of the ones that, you know, cause that's a book about bullying where most times, again, most books I had seen about bullying were kids who were the targets of bullies. Yeah. I had never seen a book that was about the kids who are the bullies, you know? So I always like to take an idea and I flip it around to make it more unique, you know? And then, you know, to have multiracial and boys and girls and stuff. So I think it's a real fun book. It I have is. to figure out what I want to do with it. Like, would you want to see that as a graphic novel or are you yes. like that? Yeah. And I love the little graphic novel part during the fight scene. And mm -hmm. it's like, it wouldn't be a Jerry craft book if there weren't some graphics and. Yeah. And Did you notice at the bottom, there is a flip book. I didn't. Yeah. So if you flip those pages, the characters, yeah. in their costumes. That's cool. Yeah. I did not notice that. Stay. And. I happen to be a fan of many different book genres, and I've read many graphic novels. I mm -hmm. found topics such as discrimination, LGBTQ and identity themes, and especially bullying on the pages of graphic novels, which is why I'm always surprised to hear people that people believe that graphic novels aren't real books. Right. And, but I find that many graphic novels like New Kid in Class Act tackle important topics and can sometimes be even more valuable than prose. Mm -hmm. So... I know that you're a strong supporter of graphic novels, so I'm curious, how can we send the message to others that graphic novels are important pieces of literature? Well, the one thing, and obviously I'm I'm absolutely honored to have won the Newbery, mm -hmm. right? So for me personally, that is an amazing achievement. Um, but I will always remember a story of a bookstore owner and she wrote me and she said that a dad came into the, her bookstore with his son. And the kid was like, can I get a graphic novel? He's like, nah, you know, get a real book. And the bookstore owner says, well, excuse me, sir, but um, a graphic novel just won the Newbery, which is the highest honor for children's books. And he goes, oh, okay, well, get whatever you want then. You know, so it has like that kind of an impact, you know? And it's very cool that kids, I mean, they're in non-readers or, you know, quote unquote, reluctant readers. And there's that whole thing, you know, do you not like to read or just have you not found your book? And I know with me, I just hadn't found my book. 
So it's funny when teachers come to me and said, there is this kid in my class who has not read a book ever. And he came to me and said, Miss Thompson, promise me, you have to read this book. Read New Kid over the weekend so we could talk about it on Monday. And she's like, wait, 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 wait. You're giving me reading homework? <laughs> so the fact that this reluctant reader is now reading a Newbery award-winning book and wanting to discuss it with the teacher, again, is just absolutely amazing. And, you know, it's like, I actually work harder doing a graphic novel because, you know, I, first of all, I put in the same character arcs, mm -hmm. the same story arcs, and the same this and the same that. But even like little things that no one would, but me will notice, like in New Kid, Jordan's hoodie is zipped all the way up. In Class Act, he's a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. You know, so he's, you know, a little bit more casual. It's open up a little bit. Um, there are things in the background that I've hidden, you know, their expression. So like if um if you say the word, oh really, ex you know, with a question mark, right? So if it's oh really, and it's just like this, you know, it's like it's a question. But now if I draw Jordan rolling his eyes, then it's like, oh really? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you as a reader have to take the words and the pictures. And there's a lot of deciphering that you have to do. So I think it stimulates your brain even more. Now, for me, it's twice as much work because if I'm doing a prose book, I could say, Jordan went into his class and he sat down. But if I'm drawing it, well, what does the classroom look like? Mm -hmm. Who's he sitting next to? Who's to his left? Who's to his right? Are they desk or is it, you know, the big table? Yeah. Are there posters on the wall? Is it, you know, so I have to really create like a whole universe. So it takes forever to do that. Um, yeah. And then you'll read the book in like one sitting. You're like, when's the next book, Mr. Kraft? I'm like, <laughs> you better read that book again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I need to reread New Kid again and Class Act and look for those little hidden features. Like I I actually did notice how sometimes you drew their eyes a little bit differently, but that's, now I just have to ex examine the background, examine all these little details that I might have missed the first three times I've read it. Yeah. Well, like, for example, in uh, class at the upper school table, like the, the senior black kids. Um, remember that scene? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are all authors as kids. Kwame Alexander, Jason Reynolds. Really? Jackie Woodson, Elizabeth Acevedo, Nick Stone, Derek Barnes, and Renee Watson. Yeah. So, so cool. yeah. So I use those names. Only a few people have caught that. So there's an, an E-Train exclusive yeah. <laughs> there for you. You know, so there's a lot of things uh, in street signs in the background. And, you know, Alexander's shirt. Did you ever realize that Alexander's shirt, the expressions on the shirt actually change? You know, really? so, yeah, so if she's surprised, the eyes on the smiley face will pop open big. Well, I need to read New Kid in Class Act again and again, and I want to notice these little hidden features. And now that all of you listening and watching, you'll want to just examine the book a little bit deeper, get your magnifying glass. Yeah, and you you're, might find surprised. Something. Yeah. Yep. And now time for my final question, the question I ask all Jake, of my guests. Okay. Like in this scene here. Oh, yeah. Alexandra is actually so happy to be with them that she's actually floating in the air like her. Yeah, I saw her. that. Yeah. So, okay, I'm ready for the final question. <laughs> okay. And I love the little hidden, hidden details that you add. So if you could be or meet any literary character, fictional or real, who would it be and why? Um, that is a tough question because like I said, the books that I was exposed to, um, there weren't a lot of happy kids, you know? There was a lot of like struggle and stuff. Um, you know, one of the first characters as a kid who I kind of liked uh, was Pip from Great Expectations, the Charles Dickens book. And that was the first like big boy book that I ever read all the way through. And I was stunned that I read a 300 page book. Um, then when I had kids of my own, I remember reading Bud Nut Buddy, which I loved. Yeah. 
and holes. So yeah, it might be one of those course, one of those characters. I think maybe the Elizabeth Acevedo character because she she is one of the characters who does get to travel um, overseas. So that was kind of cool. That was one of the first times I saw that. And like I said, I was a grown man. This is like just a few years ago. So I think I think that's my answer. This has been one day that I will never forget. You've accomplished so much and your meaningful and uplifting stories are reaching so many kids across the globe. I'm so happy to be able to help shine a light on everything you're doing with my viewers and listeners. And everybody, my guest today has been the gifted, just wonderful, incredible, award-winning author, Jerry Craft. And everybody, you can learn more about Jerry's books through his website. And I highly recommend getting your hands on a copy of New Kid, Class Act, The Offenders, any of his books. They're amazing reads and you're not gonna wanna put them down. And you know that most of you have probably read New Kid or Class Act, but hey, he has so many more books that are self-published and you're going to love them. I know I did. And Very that's good. all. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jerry. You got it. April 4th, 2023 for school trip. All right. I'll have, I'm looking forward to that and so many others are as well. Thank you so much. Thank and you, Jerry. It doesn't get better than talking to a Newbery Award winner, everybody. And you have to read this Newbery Award winning book. And that's all. Stay safe, keep reading, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye, everyone.